Live from Washington, D.C., it's Cube Conversations with John Furrier. Hello everyone, welcome to a special Cube Conversation here at Amazon Web Services headquarters in public sector in Washington, D.C., actually in Arlington, Virginia. It's a Cube coverage on the ground in Washington, D.C. Our next guest is Shannon Kellogg, who's the Director of AWS Public Policy in Americas here joining us. Thanks for spending the time with us. It's a pleasure to be here. So obviously public policy is a big part of public sector, hence the success you guys have had. Um, Amazon's had great success. When you go back four years ago, the shot heard all around the cloud was the CIA deal. Indeed. And since then there's been this gestation period of uh, innovation. You guys have been penetrating, doing a lot of hard work. Um, I know how hard it is and kind of knowing the DC culture, how hard was it and how hard is it for you guys now? Is it getting easier? I mean, policies, got a lot of education involved, a lot of moving parts. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I joined over five years ago and when I joined, there was very little understanding that Amazon was even in the cloud computing business. And so we really had to start from scratch. And uh, so it was just basic education and awareness work. And yeah, I wouldn't call that easy, but it certainly was in a different time mm -hmm. where people were curious about Amazon, AWS, and cloud. You know, what is cloud computing? The cloud um, uh, computing directive of the federal government, cloud first policy had just come out mm -hmm. uh, a year prior. And so there was a lot of curiosity. So people were willing to talk, uh, mm -hmm. people were curious, but uh, they didn't really understand what cloud computing was. And again, they didn't even realize that AWS was in that business. And back at that time, and, and I know you have a tech history with EMC before and RSA, you know the tech game. You've seen many waves of, of innovation. Um, and it's almost a time where you saw some interesting shadow IT developing. Shadow mm -hmm. IT term referred to kind of, uh, you know, in the shadows, you experiment, you put your credit card down, get some Amazon, get some cloud and, and test, kick the tires if you will, kind of without anyone seeing it called shadow IT. That became a big part of the growth how much shadow IT has been involved to kind of force the Amazon to the table? Did that help? Was that a was that a help driver for you guys? Was it uh, yeah. going on? Well, it, it's interesting because when you look back four or five years ago, uh, there were a lot of first movers in departments and agencies, uh, folks in little uh, units that I had actually even never heard of in some of the big agencies, uh, customers that I would speak to that were experimenting with AWS and commercial cloud. And in those days, they were able to take out their credit card and experiment a little bit with it and you know, discover what was possible. Uh, and we saw a lot of uptake and interest as a result of some of that experimentation. But really things started to change in a big way when AWS won the contract to build the community cloud for the intelligence community. And following that win, and 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 you know, as that project uh, was implemented, and you know, in the six months to a year after that award, yeah. uh, we saw a lot more interest by agencies to not just experiment, but to go bigger. I couldn't get Amazon to confirm. I've tried many times on the Cube, Jassy, and. Uh, Theresa to get them to confirm that that was certainly a shadow IT effort that someone within the CIA came out of the woodwork and said, hold on IBM, we have an alternative. Um, yeah, well I can't, <laughs> confirm I can't comment tonight. on that either, but I can tell you that it was a very open competitive yeah. process yeah. Uh, that we won yeah. and it was a very big deal for the community and a very big deal for us. Yeah. And you know that's when we really started to see a uh, number of other agencies and organizations uh, really not just um, uh, experiment with cloud, but how can we leverage this to get the same benefits that the Intel community And has. IBM didn't help either, they got cocky, they figured they're going to sue you guys and end up amplifying it where the judge actually said on the ruling, Amazon is a better service. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't get a better testimony, but let's talk about the that, that move. It was a resounding uh, public, uh, a resounding legal opinion and I, I would encourage your viewers who haven't yeah. read it to, to read it. It's well documented on SiliconANGLE, search SiliconANGLE, um, AWS, IBM, CIA deal, you'll find it. But I think what's notable about that is it's, it's kind of cocky because the old way of doing things was, you know, schmooze, win the, win the ivory tower, have that relationship, rely on that, lean on that relationship. And the IT just, they were just like going through security at the airport, you know, just whatever, right? They right. just check the boxes. You got to win the, the C level. 
That now has changed, where not only is the buying and evaluation process bottoms up, there's a lot of consensus involved. There's now new stakeholders. You bet. Talk about that new dynamic, because this is a modern trend. It's not just you know send it to the department for a checkbox. It's truly agile. Talk about this new modern procurement process that people are going through. You bet, and it's still uh, uh, evolving. Uh, but over the last few years, uh, we've seen um, a lot of interest by federal organizations to shift from what is traditionally a capital expense model to an operational expense model. And um, you'll probably laugh at me that I actually even remember this, but in the 2015 budget, uh, with the previous administration, President Obama's uh, budget request in 2015, uh, there was actually on page 41 of that budget uh, a line or actually a paragraph that talked about how the federal government uh, would uh, need to continue to move to commercial cloud services. And in the language, in the budget, it actually talked about uh, the um, consumption model, the operational expense model versus you know the traditional capex hey, model shannon what is commercial cloud because you know i mean again back to the old days kind of back in my days when i was growing up in the industry you had a federal division that managed all the government stuff sometimes separate products right i mean i mean absolutely d different unique features yeah, you in the government now with the the cloud am, am I, are you might hearing that this is the same cloud that amazon runs is it a different product i know there's different you know, private Certainly cloud. our cloud but what is, is, is the one cloud? option. Explain uh, what the and, commercial cloud yeah, is. Yeah, our, our cloud is one option in this, in this area of commercial cloud services, uh, and uh, we think it's a great option. Um, but uh, if you look at the different types of solutions, NIST actually talked about this when they put out the definition of what cloud computing uh, uh, should be described as several years ago. I think the final definition came out in 2011. And at the time, they called uh, public cloud, um, uh, uh, which you know we, we in federal agencies now really refer to as commercial cloud as one of the uh, deployment models. Mm -hmm. um, but it also uh, is really emphasizing commercial solutions and commerciality versus uh, having an agency go out and try to build its own cloud mm -hmm. uh, or to issue a special contract that is controlled by that agency that does a traditional private cloud type of build, mm -hmm. um, uh, like for example, California did with CalCloud several years ago. Uh, we're seeing more and more agencies move away from that model and into Why procuring. Is that? Why are they moving? Uh, well, because costly? yeah, just like HP and everyone else backed out of cloud. Same I, reason. It's it's costly. And one thing, looking at Cal Cloud, and if you haven't um, sort of looked at what they did with their policy in 2014, they issued a policy. California did, which basically created a preference for Cal Cloud. And by August of 2017, they moved away from that preference, reversing the policy. And then doing, you know, sort of a about face and saying, not only is there not a preference for Cal Cloud, this privately built cloud, uh, anymore in California, but there's going to be a preference for commercial cloud services and leveraging commercial solutions and technologies. Was well, that, is that, is that again the same reasons why a lot of commercial vendors like HP, even VMware, and others who kind of backed out of the cloud. It's expensive, it's complicated, right? I mean, is that is that the main driver or is it more of talent? I mean, why are they did Cal Cloud move from that to the Yeah, the I mean, I obviously can't speak for what other well, companies generally speaking. have done, but but I think um, you know, based on our observations at the federal level, at the state level and even internationally, we're seeing more and more governments in their cloud policies um, focus on how to leverage commercial mm -hmm. cloud services versus build their own, mm -hmm. or go out and spend a billion dollars in trying to build their own through a, through a contract or a traditional contract. I talked to Teresa Carlson. Uh, and by the way, just for the record, in California, it was IBM who who actually ended up building uh, Cal Cloud. <laughs> nice dig on IBM there, good one. Um, so I just talked to Teresa Carlson, and she and I were talking about the notion of commercializing the ecosystem, mm -hmm. bringing tech in with government, kind of the mashup or integration culturally and among other things, technology. Right. Um, I, was, I had an interview with the, uh, an executive at New Relic, one of your Amazon's top customers. I think they were saying they were getting FedRAM certified, but there's a variety of certifications that you guys offer essentially people in the ecosystem, non-governmental, but they can come in and provide solutions. Can you talk about that dynamic? Because we're seeing that become a trend now where folks in the Amazon or in general tech ecosystem says, hey, you know what, I can go in 
through Amazon and do some business with the public public sector. Sure. What do you guys offer? Is there a playbook? Is there a roadmap? Is there check boxes? What's the play playbook? Well. Um, First of all, if you don't, uh, your viewers don't know what FedRAMP is, it's a um, federal government uh, security evaluation process for cloud computing providers and service providers who want to sell to the U.S. federal government. And the framework itself was created on uh, international security standards as well as existing and evolving in some cases uh, NIST uh, uh, security standards. And so it's a common security framework that any company of any size can align to. And uh, AWS, because we believe so strongly in security and because we had a lot of first mover customers in the federal government marketplace, um, we really invested in that process early. And as a result of that, we meet the FedRAMP requirements at the different security levels that exist. Mm -hmm. And we were one of the first providers to actually do that. And then partners started working with us and leveraging that. And not just uh, um, so what does that mean resellers the or they systems to, integrators. They piggyback on your certification or they have to do some modifications. It's like the stamp of approval. You can't get into the party without it, right? Yeah, you have to have FedRAMP uh, certification in order to provide certain types of services to the US government. A lot of agencies now uh, require uh, yeah. some type of FedRAMP uh, uh, certification to do business with them. It's very common. Any other now. certifications that um, they need? Uh, well, that's, that's the most common one at the federal level, uh, but there are some department-specific requirements too. So for example, when you look at the Defense Department, they've added additional uh, requirements on top of FedRAMP and providers like us have to go through those additional processes. And then again, if you're partnering with an AWS and we've gone through that process and we made the investments and you have uh, some software that's based on AWS, that's going to be favorable for you in order to uh, sell to uh, that market segment. Take a step back and, and zoom out and talk about the big landscape in DC. Obviously, DC is the center of the action for you know, policy and this obviously public sector all around the world as well in the United States. What's the trend that you're seeing? I mean, obviously Amazon is kind of like a, 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 its own black swan if you think about it. They're lowering prices and increasing functionality on a daily basis of the business model of Amazon. They win on scale. Customers are happy with that and the government seems to be happy. Yet the competitive landscape couldn't have been at an all-time high, certainly Oracle, IBM, Microsoft, and others are competing for the same, same, same dollars potentially. So you have the old guard, as Andy Jassy would say, and you guys you know, self-described new guard. What's the landscape look like? How are you guys competing? What observation can you share? And, and the role of policy makers in the middle of it? Are they stuck yeah. between all this? Well, it's been quite a ride uh, over the last uh, seven or eight years. Uh, again, going back to the, when the first uh, cloud um, uh, policy was issued by the fe uh, federal government CIO at the time, Vivek Kundra, very early days, they talked about each agency trying to move three applications you know, <laughs> to the cloud. Uh, and so we're in a much different time now. Um, and there are a lot of agencies who are going all in on uh, cloud services. Um, that's actually been really uh, uh, fast forwarded and emphasized even more over the last couple of years, starting with the previous administration mm -hmm. and the emphasis that they had. I talked about the 2015 mm -hmm. budget, but we also saw a number of other policy initiatives in the previous administration during President Obama's eight years. Um, and then you had the new administration come in and really emphasize this early too. And one of the cornerstone things that's happened by the new administration over the last year has been the development and then the release of the president's uh, report on IT modernization. And they set up uh, a new um, uh, Office of American Innovation and a new tech council to advise on the development of that report. And they went out, the administration did, and got a lot of input uh, from the industry. And then they came out with a final report of recommendations in December, and they're already moving to actually implement a number of those recommendations and pilot a number of recommendations in agencies. Uh, and they're really emphasizing shared services and commercial cloud services as a key part uh, of that effort. And then in tandem with that, and this is probably going to shock you, but in tandem with that, Congress actually worked uh, with the administration to also make a number of changes to law, including um, in December of 2017, a really important piece of legislation called the Modernizing Government Technology Act. 
and that was added to the uh, defense authorization bill for 2018. You know in this town that's often how legislation moves at the end of the year is through the defense authorization bill. Mm -hmm. And so that legislation was passed and it really is focused on uh, helping agencies in their IT modernization efforts move mm -hmm. again from uh, legacy IT systems to the cloud and they're not doing that just because it low, uh, lowers costs and it's a good thing to do, they're actually um, doing that uh, as part of a way to improve the federal government's cybersecurity posture. And that's the last thing I'll talk about that's happened in the last year is I mentioned what the administration did with its IT modernization report. I mentioned also what Congress did with the Modernizing Government Technology Act. Well, there was also a new cybersecurity executive order that was issued during the year by the president that married those two things. And basically it made very clear that there's very little possibility to actually improve the security of federal systems without moving forward with the IT modernization efforts and moving to cloud. And the cyber warfare we're living in, it truly is a cyber war. This is not just you know hand-waving IT modernization. It's beyond that because it's critical, critical infrastructure now being compromised. This is, you know, our security, right? And it's the, it's the state of the security of, uh, of our people. You bet, and quite frankly, we're seeing this trend internationally too. You see more and more governments making this link between IT modernization and, and, and improving uh, the country's cybersecurity posture. We've seen that in the UK, we've seen that in It Australia. takes a cyber war to fix IT. I mean, you know, <laughs> is that what we're coming to? Okay, final point is obviously IT modernization is key. I love that that's driving it. We need to go faster. Question for you, Cloud First, certainly a big uh, initial orientation for the, from the government to go Cloud First. Question you, for you is, do you see uh, the expectations yet in the agencies and in throughout public sector for cloud speed, meaning I don't mean like speed and feeds, like moving to an agile outcome, you know, faster delivery, under budget, on time, yeah. lower prices. Is that expectation now set or is it still getting there? No, we believe it is, is being set. And if you look at developments over the last six months, I mean, you now have the Department of Defense that has come out with, a, with changes to policy to move faster to the cloud. And if you look at the Secretary, I'm sorry, the Deputy Secretary of Defense's memorandum in September of last year, he talked a lot about leveraging um, uh, cloud computing as part of a way to um, uh, make improvements in uh, the implementation of technologies such as artificial intelligence and machine learning. And in that memo they talked about that's a national security imperative uh, to do that. Mm -hmm. And so they're seeing technology not as the end result, but as a way to enable a lot of these developments and changes. Mm -hmm. And you know we've already seen many of those steps forward in the intelligence yeah. community, so it's very encouraging to us that we're also seeing now the Department of Defense move in this direction. So they're running towards the cloud, they're running towards AI. They're trying to. They're going as fast as they can because they need to. They're trying Final to. Final word on security. What do you hope to have happen in our government in America to really crack the code on cyber security and surveillance, all these uh, these holes, especially with IoT, the surface area couldn't be big, bigger. So before I uh, answer that question, one thing I did want to say, um, because we were talking about uh, the Department of Defense and you had uh, added a question in earlier about you know what some of the legacy providers may or may not be doing. Mm -hmm. Well, these two things are married. Um, what we're seeing at the Department of Defense is that they really do want to move faster to the cloud, but you've probably noticed in the press that there are uh, you know many different legacy providers out there, and as uh, our boss would say, Andy Jassy, a lot of the old guard <laughs> community who want to try to slow that transition down. Uh, and so that is really uh, something that's going on right now. There's a lot of effort out there to pursue the status quo, to continue to keep the lights on, and if you look at what amount of the federal budget that is being spent on keeping the lights on in IT, uh, it's over 80% is what the number is, is commonly referred to. And so a lot of companies are making, traditional companies, old guard companies, as Andy Jassy would say, are making a lot of money uh, following that same path. And you know what? The taxpayer can't afford that anymore. The mission owners can't afford that anymore. And so it's really time 
uh, to move forward into the 21st century and leverage uh, commercial cloud technologies, some of these advanced capabilities like artificial intelligence and machine learning. And then, you know, to answer your final yeah. question. Hold on, it's on the DOD thing, because I, I did see that news. It's obviously sure. clearly FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, as they you say bet. in the industry from the old guards, to slow down the process. That's classic move, right? Hey, slow it down, is. we're going to lose this thing. We don't put the brakes on it. It's a classic it. move that some some companies have been practicing for, yeah, for a few decades. 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 Yeah. We all know that. I mean, <laughs> it's called you know selling 101 when you want to secure the ivory tower. Okay, yeah. so Paul, but this is the tactic, and I want to get your opinion. This is a policy question. It's not in the best interest of the users and the society and the citizens to have a policy injection for political warfare on deal selling. So that's essentially what I see happening. Yeah, we agree. Your, and we will get your comments on this because it comes up to a very political topic, technically, multi-cloud. Right. So the move is, whoa, you can't go to one cloud. You know, we're putting all our eggs in one basket, so we have to spec it to be multi-cloud. That's the policy injection. What's the impact of that, in your opinion? It, yeah, does well, it matter? Does the government say, hey, we should do multi-cloud? Or, or, or first... I mean, you uh, actually want to have one cloud. That's what you Well, Jesse actually, wants, but... you know, that's, that's not true. What I'll, what I'll say, um, and take a step back here, is that what we want is what the customer wants. And, you know, a lot of companies are forgetting the customer uh, in this debate about multi-cloud versus single cloud. So your jump ball, just your, your philosophy is jump We ball. welcome open competition. So multi-cloud, single cloud. We want to serve cloud. the customer. Um, what happened with the intelligence community is they had an open competition for a single cloud approach. Um, one thing that's happening right now, uh, uh, you know, as part of this broader discussion, is some of the old guard companies are spe uh, spreading a lot of misinformation about um, the like different what? types of contracts. And so there's been a lot of misinformation about DOD trying to pursue a sole source contract for this Jedi program, you know, that they're trying to, to do to implement cloud. And what DOD has said in the stories that I've read on the record is that they want to have an open competition. And whether or not they choose a single award, which is different than a sole source that's not competed, if they choose a single award that's competed like the intelligence community did, or they choose a multi-award, it's gonna be their preference. And let me tell you something, the policy space, what we've heard consistently from members of Congress and other policymakers is they don't wanna be in the business of telling the Department of Defense or any other federal agency specifically what they should do or shouldn't do in a technology procurement. What they want is an open competition. And I'll tell you, on the record, we embrace an open competition. And that will serve the customer as well. But don't tell the customer, if you're an old guard company, what they should or shouldn't do. And don't ignore the customer. Well, I would, run from just on a personal standpoint, industry participant, I would say that that's going backwards. If you have the companies doing old guard tactics, injecting policy and FUD to slow a deal down just to save it, that's really bad bad form. Yeah, it's, and that's it's, going backwards. It's that's bad not... policy, but it's also bad for the taxpayer and it's bad for the mission owner. So <laughs> let there be open competition. <laughs> let the customers like DOD make the decisions that they're going to make, which is going to be best for their mission. Well, Shannon, as uh, Teresa, a basketball fan would say, jump ball. You know, make yeah. it fair and let Let's the chips it. fall where they may. Let's do it. All right, open competition. That is Amazon's position here in DC. Policy, no problem, we can play that game, but it's all about the customers. Shannon, thanks for your insight you and observation. Shannon Kellogg, who's in charge of policy in Americas for AWS. This is Cube Conversations. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.